Job 12, and the verse number 7 to 10. We will look at verse 7 at least, just as the introductory scripture it says, But now ask the animals, the New King James says beasts, but ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky and they will tell you, or speak to the earth and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. Throughout the scriptures we have seen, as we understood from the introduction last week, that God created these creatures for us to learn from them. And so we learned from the eagle last week. And I continued on Wednesday, we learned from the ostrich. And the ostrich was another level altogether. Um, a day after the service, somebody called me and said, Bishop, the ostrich was another level. And I'm applying the knowledge. I'm now recognizing who I am. Hallelujah. And one person told me that all along he really didn't know that that that, um, proverb or that uh, maxim that the ostrich buries its head in the sand because it is shaking responsibility is not true. But actually the real reason as I taught on Wednesday was the fact that when he puts his head in the sand, it is actually turning the eggs because it is the only bird that cannot fly. It is the only bird that has wings and cannot fly. And because it cannot fly, it didn't limit it as we learned. But it has also another advantage. The Bible says that, and of course, scientists have also proved that it is the fastest running animal with two feet or two legs. Other animals can run faster, cheetah, etc. These are all four-legged animals. But this one is the only one that is, is able to run faster. And its average, when it's at its minimum, is 60 miles per hour. And so the ostrich doesn't bow or is afraid of anybody when it sees danger. But rather when it puts its head in the sand, because it cannot fly, it cannot lay its eggs in nests on trees. So it does them in the sand and covers them in the sand and occasionally turns them about so that they can have even temperature. And when he sees people, the reason why early generations thought that when he saw people, it is trying to hide, was the fact that when he sees people, he realizes that the most valuable asset it has are its eggs, which contains the future children. So it puts its head there to want to protect it. But it is not a shaking of responsibility. You don't have to miss the services. Hallelujah. This morning, I'll be teaching you on the ant. Somebody shout ant. A-N-T or A-N-T-S if we are looking at all of them. And I shared on Wednesday that God created these animals not only for food but for us to study from them. And that in Deuteronomy he himself described himself as an eagle. And also we are told that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So we see all these things and everything that God created they are to teach us lessons. They are not just there for fun. God created things with purposes in mind. And so we need to understand some of these things. Even when we study, if you later on go to Job, of course, when I'm teaching on spiritual warfare, we'll look at that. But if you look at Job and you look at the Mazaroth, the cluster of stars, and, and, the, and the signs of the zodiac. Now, people have studied them in the wrong way. But if you look at them, you will see that it starts from Virgo and ends in Leo. The virgin birth and he's coming back again as a lion of the tribe of Judah. You need to understand the eternal writings in the universe. These are clear things that are in the scriptures. Um, So you need to understand what God was doing um, when he brings this. But for the sake of my time today, today is a very crazy day for me. Um, So for the sake of time, let's go quickly to the ant. Somebody shout the ant. So we learn from all these animals. Um, And today I want to talk about the ant. It's a very small animal, but it has a lot of lessons to teach us. In Proverbs chapter 6 and the verse number 6, the Bible says, go to the ant, you sluggard. He was addressing lazy people. Listen, you can't be rich with a lazy lifestyle. You cannot have a 10 million pound dream and vision with a 10p work ethic. You 
Go to the ants, you lazy person. The NLT says, you lazy bones. Consider her ways and be wise. So before you quickly destroy that ant, the scripture says, learn from it. In Ghana, years ago, there was a magic chalk that destroys ants. Before you use your magic chalk, please learn from the ant. The Bible says that learn from their ways. Though we have been instructed, it wasn't a suggestion. It says go to them. In other words, observe them and learn their ways. It's so important to your progress. And the Bible says it has no captain, it has no prime minister, it has no supervisor, it has no overseer or ruler, but provides her food in the summer. Gathers her food in the summer. And gathers her food in the harvest. Provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. And how long will you slumber, oh sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber. A little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall poverty come on you. And your need like an armed man. Hallelujah. We learn a lot from the ant. And the Bible says that of the scripture we just read, I want us to look at one more thing in Proverbs 30, 24 to 25. Proverbs 30, 24 to 25. And then I'm going to condense these two scriptures and present to you. For the sake of time, I have five, but I may send only two this morning and then we will continue the rest another time. Things to learn from them. Proverbs 30, 24. Are, are we all seeing the scriptures? But you must have your own Bible too. There are four things which are little on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Four things. They appear insignificant on the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. Move. The ants are a people not strong. The scripture calls them a people. They are a people. They are not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer. Hallelujah. They prepare their food supplies in the summer. The first lesson I want us to learn from the ant is preparation. Somebody shout preparation. Preparation. It's a very important thing. The Bible says they prepare their food in the summer. So the first lesson is preparation. What is preparation? It is getting ready for what is yet to happen. That is preparation. Getting ready for what is yet to happen. I tell the students all the time, you can't wait till exam timetable is here and now you are preparing to study. You will fail. We, we, can, we can pour gallons of oil on your head. You will fail. Because you need to be studying. And when it is exam week, you revise. These are the strategies by which we pass exams. So, going for lectures is gathering information. Every day, and I've put a lot of them on assignment... I'm glad that a lot of them are complying. I've got a lot of their timetable, all those university, and I'm juggling things around. So you can't do this at this time. You have to do this. You have to do this. Move this. Every day, there must be at least an hour or two that you have devoted to studying. So you go for lectures to gather the facts, but there must be a time you alone, not the lecture hall, we don't study there. We receive information from the lecturers. Then you separate yourself alone once, at least two hours in every day and you alone no one is there put every phone off let your friends know this is what I'm doing I am not available at this time and study that means you go over the information until you grasp it and get the understanding and then that study stays with you you make notes and put that down and continue to build on. So when exam timetable comes out, 
you are now revising what you have studied. In that way, you are prepared for the exams. It's the same thing with assignments. You don't wait till tomorrow is the deadline and say, um, they said we have to. You will submit some form of information, but it may not qualify for a degree. Are you here this morning? So we have to learn the art of preparation. So preparation is getting ready for what is yet to happen. This means making provision for the future, although it is not here yet. You make ready, you make provision for the future, even though it is not yet here. So the Bible says that the ant, they are not mighty, they are not big. They are small, but they are exceedingly wise. And the scripture began to bring out what makes them wise. And in that way, the scripture tells us we should learn from them. And that means we must learn the wisdom that God put in the ant. And this case, that one of them is that they prepare in the summer for their food. Because you see, summertime is not longer than winter time. Depending on which geographical location, if we are looking at it averagely, summer may start from May towards end of May, but June, July, August, thereabouts is ending. These days, global warming and whatever is making September look like it's summer, but by the end of September, at least four months. But then winter starts just around this time. We are seeing it, isn't it? The weather has changed. Something is changing. So October Autumn, winter is there. November, December, January, February. Then you hit March before um, springtime. So you have about five, six months of cold winter, depending on the geographical location in Europe or America. And so you see that there are many more months of winter than summer. But many people forget themselves. And that's why Jesus said that if anybody is intending to build a tower, sit down first and count the cost. So, the ant prepares. They prepare. When we read through the scriptures, you, it's very easy to think about all the people God used mightily and, and we want the anointing on their lives, but we fail to realize that none of them could be used by God without preparation. They were prepared for the job. You must be prepared. If you are going to excel in anything, you must prepare. I have to prepare to come and teach this morning. And preparation is not very easy. Especially if you have to be an effective preacher. Because you must prepare also your line of thought as you present it. So that people can understand the sequence of your presentation. So it's not just bundling some scriptures together. That at the end of the day, the people feel more confused. So it's a whole planning. You have to plan. Teachers plan their lessons. So they can deliver for the understanding of the students so that they can work with the knowledge. Otherwise, they will not be effective. If we look at Joseph, we love Joseph in the Bible. He went to the palace and eventually became prime minister. But we forgot that he, had, he started having dreams of what he was to become at the age of 17. God was giving him a picture of the future. He saw 12, um, 11 stars, the sun and the moon bow before him. And his brothers immediately understood the dream. <laughs> These are the sons of a prophet. They don't need another prophet to help them interpret this dream. They immediately saw what it means. And it was clear he's going to be a leader. His father even understood it and just said, does it mean that your mother and I and your brothers are going to bow before you? But the Bible says, and Joseph observed the saying and kept it to himself. But the brothers were jealous. Sometimes the first enemy to your vision are members of your family. Some members of your family. Some members of the family. <laughs> it's amazing. They are the first to oppose anything you say. But the Bible says Joseph's brothers hated him, etc. And then he had another dream. And then eventually he was sold, resold, to be sold twice is serious. To be sold once itself is unacceptable. But he was sold twice. And then he had to work as a slave for some years. 
So before he entered Pharaoh's palace, he had to go through this period of preparation. The scripture says he started having these dreams at 17, was sold at the age of 17. He got into Egypt and was in Egypt for 13 years. When finally he was called that night to come out of the prison to go and stand before the Pharaoh, he was 30 years when he entered. He has been there in preparation for 13 years. For 13 years. And it was also more than 13 years because when he stood before the Pharaoh, then he told Pharaoh, I'm speaking to you from Genesis 37 all the way to 41 at the moment. The Bible says that he stood before the Pharaoh and interpreted the dream and said that it is going to be, the meaning of the dream is that there's going to be seven years of abundance. And after the seven years of abundance, there will be seven years of famine to the extent that the nature of the famine will be as if there has never been abundance on this land before. Then the seven years of abundance passed. So you add that seven to the 13 years of being there and that is a total of 20 years. And then halfway in the midst of the, of the seven years of famine, that is when his brothers came and bowed before him. So that is like 23 and a half years of waiting for that moment when his brothers will come and bow before him. But 13 years of preparation to enter the palace to handle the economic affairs of a state. He has to understand what hunger is. So he has to be a slave to serve so that his understanding of hunger is not the World Health Organization or World Food Program dictionary definition of hunger. Something, something, something below a poverty line. That doesn't make sense until your stomach itself has witnessed When you fast, not by divine direction, but when you turn left and right, there is no food to eat. You lie on your bed and count the ceiling. Not because you want to have an exercise, but something to make you sleep. The tummy itself has, is bearing witness. When all that you have is some gary and some persecuted fish, The thing has been frozen, thawed, frozen, thawed, microwaved, re-microwaved. It has gone through so many things. You just have to eat it, not for the nourishment, but so that you can be satisfied in your tummy. Something has landed in there. So he went through all of this, and in the midst of all this, he was still exercising his prophetic gift, even in prison. So that at the time he was brought out to stand before the Pharaoh, he was fully prepared for the job. That night after he spoke and the Pharaoh said, we can't find, can we, where can we find any man who has such a knowledge and wisdom? He said, let Pharaoh now find a man. He used the word now. I'm standing here indirectly. He's offering himself for the job. And when he was offered the position of a prime minister from prison, he has what it takes to roll out a 14-year economic management plan from prison to the palace. Preparation went in. So Joseph didn't just appear. He went through a period of preparation, administration. He was asked to manage things in prison, manage things. The Bible says everything of Potiphar, he handled everything. He was learning administration, doing all of that in preparation. Whatever you are doing now, take it seriously. It is your preparation for the tomorrow. You can't win the battles of life without preparation. So the ant, the Bible says, they prepared their food during summer. If we study David, we love David. We all like it from only the point where he appeared before Goliath and fired the sling. But you don't realize that the guy has been preparing behind the scenes. He has been preparing by exercising how to throw a sling. And he's been doing that for a while. So when the moment came, the victory came. Hallelujah. Everyone in Israel, most people know how to throw the sling. A stone out of a sling. They, they've been doing it. The Bible says among all these people, there were 700 select men who were left-handed. Are my friends here if you are left-handed? We the left-handed people. And we have, how many of us are in the house? Okay, one, me, Mona Lisa. Oh, Ellie, powerful. Who else? Oh, Victoria, that's right. You are in my camp. 
left-handed people. We are very rare. The Bible says everyone could sling a stone at a hair's breadth. The accuracy is spot on at a hair's breadth and they don't miss. Skillful people. First Chronicles 12, 2. Armed with, bow, with bows, using both the right and left, inhaling stones and shooting arrows with the bow. These are people in David's camp. They they are armed with bows. They are dangerous and bedextrous people. They could use both the left and right hand accurately. And the Bible says that so people could do this. But David would have been exercising whilst he's taking care of his father's sheep. He was learning how to fight lions and bears. And if he could fight a lion and a bear, then who are you, Goliath? He has been skillful at exercising himself in throwing the stone out of a sling. He's mastered the craft so well that the Bible says when he came to the battlefield and saw what was happening, ladies and gentlemen, he didn't plan to go and fight Goliath. His father sent him. The Bible says time and chance happens to everyone. Whilst you prepare, you never know when God himself is about to put you in a situation that will be the defining moment of the change of your destiny, change for the business, change for the marriage, change for everything. You never know. That is why you must be preparing every minute. Joseph went to bear the prisoner. He didn't know that that midnight, a king will have a dream. and says, I don't understand. If all my wise counselors and magicians and sorcerers cannot do anything, I will kill everybody. Then somebody said, ah, sorry. We remember, we, we met some guy in prison. He was very skillful at interpreting dreams. And they brought him in at that moment. No notification. And he came and he delivered. Be ready. Proper Preparation prevents poor performance. Five Ps. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Never forget this statement. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Whenever we see somebody that's not performed well, we have to check, did you prepare well? So David had been doing it. In fact, the Bible says when he was brought before King Saul, King Saul gave him his armor to wear. And David used a very important word. He said, I have not proved this one. I haven't tried this. That means what he has been trying, what he has been preparing himself with, is the sling and the, and the stone. He knows how to use that one very well than the sophisticated armory of a king. I haven't proved this one. What have you proved? What have you prepared yourself in all this while? Hallelujah. So when Goliath started shouting at him and cursing him by his gods, David didn't need to do, go back and look for, uh, what did they say we should do? He acted quickly, two things. He was so prepared spiritually that as soon as Goliath spoke curses, he also spoke back. He said, you come in the name of your gods, I also come in the name of the Lord of hosts. No mistake there, he didn't call him as Elohim, he didn't call him as Shalom, but he called him as Zebaoth. That means the guy is fully spiritually prepared, know when and what to invoke at what point in time. Even those in the occultic world knows that depending on the case, they know which God to call for a situation. And God has many titles, not because he wants titles, but those define his job description at a point in time. So there's a point David calls him as shepherd, but there's a point he invoked him as Zebaoth the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of heaven and on earth. And he brought him into the show at that point. So spiritually, he changed the situation and physically, he also knew how to use the right weapon. If you want to look at Jesus, he was prepared for his job. For 30 years, he did nothing. He was preparing. He didn't preach for 30 years. He started his ministry at the age of 30. But the first 30 years of his life, where was he? At 12, he was in the temple area asking questions. Preparing himself for a three-year job. Are you here? Today we love his name. But he fulfilled it by a 30-year preparation to undertake a three-year assignment. How many years are you preparing yourself for the job ahead? 
Nobody can do anything excellently without preparation. The ant prepares in the summer. Hallelujah. They prepared in the summer. They gather, they gather their food. They think so fast that during summer when everybody is enjoying the sun, they are busy working. You know, it's summer that you see them carrying some white things and they are in the formation. Before you disturb that thing, learn what they are doing. Are you here today? Your business will move to the next level if you put into good preparation against the future. Good preparation. Good preparation takes into consideration what is going on. Events. It's not just enough to have an idea, but where would the idea work? Hallelujah. A lot of people prepare towards the wedding. They don't prepare towards the marriage. The wedding is an event. The marriage is long term. You must have capacity to go the fellow. You must have capacity to manage emotions. Things change. Characters change. Behaviors change. So many things come along. How prepared are you for that? Or oh, it's just we are excited about the gown and the suit and some seven men and seven girls following and all the Instagram excitement. That is only an event. For a few hours. The real showdown. Takes place after everyone is gone. Hallelujah. Are we here? So preparation. For that institution itself. Doesn't just. It's not just I found someone I'm in love. But you must prepare emotionally. You must be prepared when things are well and what to do when things are not going well. Because in marriage, things will go well and sometimes things won't go well. You have to prepare yourself in understanding the language of each other in the marriage. It's a whole school. Young men, women don't speak directly. They speak like God. God doesn't speak directly. He speaks in reverse language. I've had my own personal issues with him. The way he talks. But we have come to accept it. He has told us already in Isaiah 55, his ways are not our ways. Neither his thoughts are thoughts. So he doesn't speak. I mean, you want to tell Pharaoh there's going to be seven years of famine. and It's okay, why don't you be plain? But all this cow swallowing cow and all those things, what is the meaning of that? You, you can talk to Samuel. You come and say, Samuel. The boy gets up, runs to Eli. You are seeing him. You won't talk. He goes and then he comes down. Lie down and say, Samuel. The guy goes again. Three times. God, can't you just speak? Then when he received the coaching on how to respond, and he did, then God spoke. Young man, when your wife tells you, if you're a man, do it. Don't do it. Listen. Listen. That's what she's saying. You have to understand the reverse. Why are you not talking today? Nothing. Her nothing means something. You have to learn the art of preparation. Amen. Prepare. It looks like I'm going to end on prepare. And in preparation, we must learn to prepare at the right time. At the right time. We must learn to prepare at the right time. Good preparation takes timing into consideration. You see, the ant, the scripture tells us, provides her supplies in summer. The supplies the ant was providing will not be consumed in summer. It will be consumed in winter. 
So, it's not waiting for winter to start preparing. Because when it gets to winter and it tries to prepare, it will starve to death. Because if they come out cold, we kill them. So even they have studied the earth so well that they have got understanding. Timing is everything when it comes to preparation. I said some years ago, what is the use of putting out the bucket when the rain has stopped? If you come from a community where, you know, you don't have tap water flowing freely and all of that and you depend on the rain. So when it starts raining, you bring out buckets and basins to get the rain. What is the point? Because you are thinking about the fact that you will get wet so you didn't come out. When it stopped raining, you are now bringing the bucket out. For what purpose? So bring the bucket out as soon as the clouds gather. Before even the first drop. That is good preparation. Timing is important. Because summer is a very interesting time of the year where we find the following characteristics. Long day light, long day light. Now it's going away. Heat generated by the sun rays and people taking time off to rest. And the ant could have chosen to do any of all these things. Take some time off to rest, relax, also enjoy what others are doing. When you know what you want to have in life, you don't copy what others are doing. Like the ostrich, it's a very weird animal, but it understands that this is how it has been made. And whenever you see them and you go near, they come out and they really strut out. See the oddity for yourself. I am strange, it means I am unique. I can't be like everybody. I said timing is important. There are many young people. You have to understand, this is your moment to plan for tomorrow. The summer of your age will soon pass. It is said that education is not a race. I've studied with someone who was then 20 years older than me at that time. You know, he was a grandfather at the time. Even though education is not a race. I realize that whilst we are all studying, he has got grandchildren calls coming in, main family calls. He has to deal with all of these things, you know. So by the time he finishes the course, because I think at that time he was about 65 or something. You see, I just could tell that even if he passes at the end, there won't be that time, enough time to really make use of all the knowledge he has acquired. So, your summer moment, please prepare before the winter time comes. We don't have forever to do things. We don't have eternity to do things. This is the time to do what you have to do now. You have to make a lot of financial preparations, young people. This is the time. The Bible says money has wings. It can fly. Sometimes you have it today. Tomorrow is not there. And that is why it's very, very important that don't take things for granted. Prepare against the future. Don't waste the money. Young people, today I don't know why I'm talking about young people again. Young people. This is the summer of your time. The winter will soon come. So don't waste the money. The money you get today, be wise as the ant. Save it. Look out for investments and put them in. Because things happen in life. Things happen. Jobs could be lost. Companies can close down and it's not your fault. There are certain nations of the world, when anything goes wrong there, it affects everybody. As he said, when America sneezes, the whole world catches a cold. Yeah. As soon as the financial crisis hit there, it started affecting everything. 
When something goes wrong with the financial institutions in the UK, things start going wrong. These two places, a lot of things, they are the nerve center of the world. There is war in Ukraine and it's affecting so many things because a lot of things were supplied from the place. Most of the microchips in our phones and cars, etc., that most of them are produced from Ukraine because that is going on. That's why a lot of backlog on new vehicles because they are not getting the components. It's the third producer of grain in the world. All these things have been blocked. So something can happen. And like the situation with the children of Israel, there came a Pharaoh who said he doesn't know anyone ever called Joseph. And he turned these people of God into slaves. Sometimes there is a policy in place which is favoring you. Stop wasting the time. Take it now because there may be another government that will change everything. Now recently a man called me and said, Pastor, thank you very much for what you said to me 13 years ago. He said, he said what? He said, you know, I, I don't come to church often, but I want to thank you that you reminded me that at that time, those with student visa could bring their spouse and their children. And I kept on postponing it. Say, look, it doesn't matter. The children, bring them. Bring them. I, wor I worried this man. And then he brought them. I don't know whether you've heard the news. But now, the new Home Secretary and the new government has changed the rule. If you come on student visa, only you must come and study and go back. There's no route for your family anymore. I've closed it. A king will come who does not know Joseph. So when there are policies in place that favor you, take advantage of them now. When there are policies that favor the establishment of your business, do it now. Because things may change. Hallelujah. Lamentations 3.27 says that it is good for the young man to bear the, the yoke in their youth. In your summer moments, prepare. Preparation, done, preparation time is done at the time one is young, full of energy and strength, passion and ideas. This is the time. To do preparation. Prepare very well. Prepare. 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 Hallelujah. Prepare for your retirement. Prepare for your retirement. It's a wise thing to do. Your latter end must be glorious. You can't come to this world. As someone said, African children, when they are born and they cry, it means two things. One, they are alive, but two, debt. They have been born into debt. Generations have put up, piled up debt for them. So you can't come into this world and it's all debt throughout and at your latter end you are paying debt till you die. Make good preparation for your tomorrow. In Jesus name. The pension alone will not be enough. Depending on the lifestyle that you have adopted and what you are doing, please think and prepare. The anointing is not abstract. The anointing is given to us to profit us in this world. It's not only to cast out demons, it's to make us also excel. That's why Luke 2.52 says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and favor. So as we want favor, we must also increase in wisdom. And this morning, I'm dispensing some wisdom into you. Be patient. Hallelujah. In Psalm 34 verse 10, the Bible says, The young lions lack and they, they hunger. They suffer hunger. You see, lions, they don't plan. They don't prepare. Whilst ants prepare their food, lions when they are hungry, then they start going out to look for food. And if you develop that lion lifestyle, you will not succeed in life. Prepare. Save something. Whenever you receive an income, there is a seed in the income. 
Because your income is your harvest after you have labored, isn't it? And every farmer knows that whenever they harvest their produce, they don't sell all. They don't eat all. They also set some aside to plant for the next harvest. Otherwise, their business will come to an end. Otherwise, they will fail. Please, don't eat all your harvest. Plan for tomorrow. Save some money for tomorrow. See, when money comes easily, it feels like it's going to be there all the time. It may not be there all the time. It's only when you start, you are in need of money, then you realize, that. but why did I even make some of these purchases I didn't need? And especially when now the, the shopping center is in your bedroom. It's right on your bed in an iPad. You can enter any shop right from this one. And you know that you've got some money, so you just start buying and buying. Some of the things you are buying, you don't need them. Save it against tomorrow. When maybe people turn their backs on you, you can have something in the account that can keep you going. When people you are depending on turn their backs on you, you can have some money to hire some people to take care of you whilst you are old. Because sometimes people change. People change. I wrote recently that money doesn't change people. It only frees those who were chained in prison by poverty. It frees characters that were jailed by poverty. As soon as they got money, now they change and they show you who do you think you are. Uh, you brought me to England and so what? And so what? If you didn't do it, somebody would have done it anyway. See, people change. <laughs> oh, you got me my documents and so what? And so what? Are you the only person who has been here who helped somebody? What is it? People change you. So when they all change, at least there should be something that you can rely on to hire someone to take care of certain things for you. May we be wise. In the name of Jesus. Be like the ants. Gather your food during summer. The summer moments of your life in Jesus' name. Let me drop these five points quickly and then we go. It's almost time. Five, how do we prepare? So I said I'm going to dwell on it. Next time I come, then I will do planning. We'll look at the ant again and how exactly they plan. Are we enjoying this series? How do we prepare? One, be faithful in little things. Be faithful in little things. If you want to prepare for tomorrow, be faithful with what you have today. Prepare. If you are going to prepare in any area, be like Joseph. He was put... In, though he was sold, he didn't stay there and they have sold me. There's nothing I can do. I can't see my father. God gave me this dream. I can't see. Listen, what you have, do something with what you have. So he started, well, okay, what do I, okay, I've been sold. Yes, okay. Master Potiphar, what do I do? Uh, take a pen, paper. Can you write? Yes, I can write something. You can do it. Gather how many people do we have? Put them, put a rotor. Get them to go and work. Get them to go and do this. Prepare their food. Get rotor for who handles the pantry bowl, etc. All those things. He was doing administration in preparation. So that when the moment comes one day, 13 years down the line, he was well qualified for the job. Your dream job may not have come, but what you have now, work it out well. It is preparation. It is preparation. It is preparation. Sometimes we don't have all the plans of God. He doesn't reveal all. He told Moses, I'm sending you, go and tell Pharaoh, take the people to the land flowing with milk and honey. Full stop. The closest hint he gave him was, Pharaoh will resist you a few times, but I will release my hand. That's all. He never told him there will be a Red Sea. He didn't tell him after crossing of the Red Sea, there will be, the people will rebel against him. That they will even worship some other gods. And that's some Amalekites, Hittites, Jebusites, all kinds of sites will come against them. He doesn't tell you. He only shows you the end. In between, you need to be depending on him and be preparing yourself. So be faithful in little things. The little things. Recently, I met some old friends who were in various secondary schools and then we all met in university later on. But we all realized that majority of them, yes, they are very well qualified. Some are doctors, engineers, some pilots. But most of them are also doing ministry. And we realize that no, all of us that were either presidents or prayer secretaries have become pastors 
and especially leading churches. So right from secondary school, we were being prepared, but we didn't know. But we were faithful in the assignment we were given. Minister to people, lay hands on them, they speak in tongues, teach them the right ways of the Lord, etc. And prepare academically, excellently. So I just want you to know, preparation means be faithful in the little things. Your business will not be great all of a sudden, but start small. And be faithful in that little thing. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in Luke chapter 16 verse 10, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. He didn't say will be. Jesus predicted how you handle the much by how you handle the little. <clears throat> and anyone who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in much. And if you have not been faithful, verse 12, if you have not been faithful in what belongs to another man, who will give you your own? Are you here? So you prepare. You want to own your own house. That's why you are first a tenant. Don't kill mosquitoes and splash them on the wall. You don't care. No. You, you don't handle everything well. Don't mismanage somebody's property. The Bible says, as you handle some, that's what determine how you have your own. If you look at the ant, they carry small substances, some white substances, every summer they are passing. Little by little, little, they are little, they are faithful in their little things. They are carrying it faithfully. They go and they come. They go and they come. And if you visit their camp, you will see that ultimately they have built a big thing. Little drops of water makes a mighty ocean. There are people who cry over the little things life gives them. Don't cry. Use the little thing and be faithful in the little thing. See, I dream of a thousand member church. But I know that if I come here, I won't see a thousand people this morning. But that is not stopping the way I have prepared for the service. And prepared for the message. And prepared for the ministry. It's the same thing as we started. When we started on 113 Nathan Way in Thames Mead. 1st June 2003. I know that it is only me and my wife. If she doesn't come to church, I have only chairs to preach to. And she was pregnant at that time. I have to drag her. Sometimes I beg her to church. She's not in a good mood, but I have to take her. Otherwise, I have no congregation. And yet, I stand and I preach. I preach powerfully. I remember a family that came to join us. The testimony from the man was, we came to the church. We saw the man was an usher. I ushered. Those days, I play multiple roles. I come early, hang the banner there, stand in front of the door, leading intercession. And she's the only one inside. And then I stand there for a while. Then if nobody comes, some will pray, some will come. I remember when we had three people for the first time. I called my friend and said, today we were three. <laughs> the Lord has been good, we were three. <laughs> and you, you do things like that, but you have prepared. So that she'll see me on Saturday night really preparing. And she's, I'm sure she'll be thinking, but it's going to be only me. But I'm preparing. And I preached to her. And the baby in her womb, I preached. That baby was standing behind the camera a few minutes ago. He's gone to the back. But yes, I was faithful. And the man said that we came, we saw the man ushering us in. Then I was also the usher. Then I usher you in. Then I still intercede. Then after that, lead some praise and worship with my mighty, strange voice. That cannot be found on the key. The media, the, the people have been telling me that. But they don't know that I'm an ostrich. They need to learn how to. <laughs> how to pick my voice on the key. Then he said, the reason why we came back, I went to tell my brother and the others that we should go, was because I saw a man who had arranged 12 chairs in a room. And his wife was the only one there when I entered. And he still preached like he was preaching at a conference. As if he was preaching to a stadium. He preached with so much power, so much conviction. And he finished, ministered. And all that, I was like, come on, I want to go there again. Now, that is preparation in little things. Faithfulness in little things. Hallelujah. And gradually, people started coming one by one. You go to visit them. I, I didn't start visiting people today. We were, I was visiting, spending the time, all of that. People, be faithful in the little thing. Sometimes their job, they will put you at a certain level. You just be faithful. So you don't know who is actually observing. 
When the door opens, they will lift you up. Faithfulness in little things. Number two, be faithful in financial matters. Listen, everything evolves around money. Even Jesus had a treasurer. You don't have a treasurer if what is coming in is just one coin. Deuteronomy 8, 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. It is he that gives you the power to make wealth. You see, he doesn't give you the wealth. Some people misinterpret that. He gives you the power, the ability to work out the wealth. Are you here this morning? It is he who gives you the power. Some of the power can be inspired ideas, creativity, concepts, all that. He gives you the power to make wealth. So God is not against wealth. It is how we use the wealth. So be faithful in financial matters. Every little money that comes, gather it well. Handle it well. If you are running a business, save some. Make sure that there are receipts, etc. The thing about our people, people that look like you and me, is as soon as you ask them for receipts, they think you think they are thieves. No, it's responsibility. Money doesn't come cheap. It's accountability. If you think about how you got up in the morning, in the cold, sometimes it's so cold that you touch your nose, you can't feel it. And then you go to work, depending on what you do. Sometimes you have to stand. You have to calculate how much do you make an hour and calculate how much it costs you to make that. So if you have to stand for one hour or be bending and carrying some things, it's not a very easy thing. And then it is maybe 10 pounds an hour. Next time you are misusing 10 pounds, think. It costs you your sweat and your blood. So be faithful in financial matters. The ant is meticulous in the gathering of his resources. Sometimes when food drops off the table and you are negligent of it, an ant quickly comes and takes it away. He gathers the crumbs. Jesus, even after he had multiplied bread, when there was a waste, he said, no, 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 don't waste it. Gather all. Some of us, there's a lot of food we waste at home. May we be wise. The cost of food stuffs has gone up very high. Don't waste the food. Understand the times have changed. Have changed. So please, don't be doing it the way it was before. If the rice is for three people and you can calculate three, three, put it there. <laughs> if you have to fetch it, scoop it and eat, you know that at least four scoops is what is sufficient for you. Don't do ten and then waste the rest and go and put it in the bin. God is not happy with that. You are not being wise. Because you're going to buy again very soon and things have gone up. Your salary has not gone up so much as the cost of things that have gone up. And this has nothing to do with the devil. Amen. Amen. So when we become negligent at the table, an ant comes wisely and picks it away and go and store it. Be wise. Number three, be faithful in that which belongs to another person. As part of your preparation, be faithful. Say, me too, I want to set up my own business. But you are letting somebody's business down. They've employed you. You've managed to hear the secret of the business. And you are feeding the main rival of the business with information. And you also want to one day set up your own business. Whatever a man sows, Reap. Be faithful in what belongs to another person. Luke 16, 12. Be faithful. What belongs to someone? You are working for someone, just be faithful. Whatever belongs to another person, they give you to handle. Handle it well. It is your preparation ground to know how to handle things in the future. When they leave anything in your hands, do it excellently. You never know that one day you'll be the head of the thing. So it is, an, it is an indirect form of training that you receive. May we be very faithful. That is how you prepare for your future. Joseph prepared for his future like that. He was given task to perform. And he was doing it in Potiphar's house. Even in prison, he was made head of the prisoners and was still faithful in his service. Be faithful in Jesus' name. Some people became great leaders and he started from being class captain. 
head of school. And you were doing all of these things. And later on, you realize that leadership is on your shoulders. You develop leadership skills from there. Have I, have I fed you this morning? The fourth nugget, and then we go. Give attention to detail. Give attention. One of the ways to prepare is to learn to give attention to detail. Attention to detail. Many people just don't pay attention to detail. If you want to excel, you must learn to give attention to detail. Because sometimes the key to the breakthrough is in the detail. Some people go into debt because they didn't read all the details of the contract. And then they are happy to sign it because they want a loan. Quickly sign. Then you realize that the interest is not what you imagine. Ten years you have been paying standing order of 200 pounds. Still, backless bank says you owe them. You have not been checking that actually what you signed for was a different APR. You are not paying attention to details. So you don't cause trouble. Where are my protons? Mona Lisa, give me the two scriptures that I always use when we come to attention to detail. The first one is 1 John 4, 18. First John 4, 18. It is said that somebody was planning the wedding and, you know, the lady asked someone to prepare the wedding cake. And so the person gave a scripture. First John 4, 18. As a scripture, the lady wanted on her wedding cake, so boldly displayed. And 1 John 4, 18 says, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Is that not wonderful and loving? There's no fear in love. Bakery lady decides, after all, John 4, 18 is still John 4, 18. I don't care about the detail. She didn't pay attention to the one in front of the John and produced on the cake, boldly on the day, John 4, 18. Please, let's go there. For you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. Hey! On the wedding day, this is on the cake. What an embarrassing statement to make. What information are we telling people about the bride? She has had five husbands. The one who you now have is not your own. Hey, lack of attention to detail can cause catastrophe. Trouble and embarrassment. I mean, if you are the one, what would you do? The cake will be moved. Unless the bride also doesn't pay attention to the detail and she has danced in all the way. Still sitting there, not paying attention. All the team is not paying attention. And now they invite Pastor Justin to come and help them to cut the cake. And now people start saying, what? what? Please hold on. What is that? <laughs> May the Lord help us. That in our preparation, we pay attention to detail. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pay attention to detail in Jesus' name. And finally, be faithful no matter what. Amen. Be faithful when no one compliments you. Be faithful when things go wrong. Be faithful when no one understands you. And be faithful when opportunities for something greater comes up. Remember, the Bible says that a faithful man will abound with blessings. Amen. Be faithful. Be consistently faithful. And that is one of the keys to preparation. Joseph was faithful to his calling. Even in prison, he didn't say, I'm angry at God. This gift of interpreting dreams. These guys who came from Pharaoh's palace, I don't care about them. They woke up in the morning, they all look very gloomy. And he looked at them and said, you don't look happy. What's wrong? They said, we've both had dreams. And he didn't say, but I'm in prison. Do I need to exercise this gift? He was still exercising the gift faithfully in prison. He didn't know that two years later, that exercise of faithful interpretation of dreams will be the key to his breakthrough. Be faithful. People may not applaud you, but just be faithful. Management may annoy you, be faithful. The same manager who is annoying you, some time to come when they say, but we need someone to handle this. He is the same person going to say to the board, you know what, that one, I've been, I've been annoying her, but I can tell you, she has got the resilience to handle this job. She can take pressure. Let's give it to her. Sometimes God will use the same people who provoked you. You are misinterpreting what they are doing, but as far as God is concerned, it's your preparation. And later on, Joseph confessed and said, 
to his brothers, I am not in the place of God. But it is God who sent me here ahead of time to preserve life. God, is that how you send people? I thought I'll be sitting down and sleeping and the Pharaoh would just come to my father's house and say they need me and with wagons and airplanes, they send me to Egypt. No, God sent him through adversity so that he will learn how to handle people. I pray in the name of Jesus that the message this morning will move you during the week to move your business, to move your life, to move your family, to move every aspect of your life. May you be wise like the ant and move into a season of preparation in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus that you will prepare so that your body will also be healthy. Don't lie down and just be sleeping. You need to jump every morning. Do some exercise. Prepare the body for the work ahead in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. I